This is Chicago. Doors open on the left at Chicago. Welcome to Chicago. Welcome, welcome to Chicago. Welcome to Chicago. This is Chicago. Doors open on the left at Chicago. Welcome, welcome, welcome. <laughs> Ivan's got it on repeat again. Welcome to Chicago. I it this time. <laughs> yeah. Coming from the 606 Media Studios, this is the TCSF Podcast with Big Z. Uh, this week is a jam-packed episode featuring Stevie B from the No Water on the Weekend, Ivan from the Tape Never Lies Network, and our football guru who will join us in a bit, J.C. Howard. AP episode 168 is brought to you by 606 Media, True Chicago Sports Fans, and Grit Clothing company don't forget to go to gritclothingco.com and get your official tcsf podcast t-shirt looks just like this yeah there and uh, <laughs> yeah nice. that's right yeah yeah very and handsome very, very handsome. handsome that's right that's what mom tells me all the time <laughs> search for keyword true chicago use our promo code true fan 15 for 15 percent off your entire order that is true fan 15 get your shirts now what's up ladies and gentlemen and all our listeners thank you for joining us on either on the web or if you're listening to on the podcast thanks for uh, listening and uh, please share this please share this with all your friends and uh, we can only get better if you have more listeners so you can subscribe uh on a monthly subscription at anchor.fm backslash true chicago sports fans go there and click on support and you can subscribe for as little as 99 cents a month so without further ado Let's get into this. Another live episode. Uh, Bears. Bajent. Is he the man that we, he's, he's supposed to be? Uh, we got a new bear on the roster. And uh, Justin. Questions on Justin's. The Cubs make a big splash. Holy shit. A big splash this afternoon. The Sox wave the white flag on some players. The Bulls, well, you know what they Bulls are. They're just full of bull, you know what. Baloney. And the, baloney, yeah, sure. And the Blackhawks are fun and exciting to watch. Um, all that and more. But right now, let's talk some football in three and out. All right, gentlemen, I think we bring in J.C. Howard. There he is. There he is. Bringing him in. And uh, now it's a full house. We have a full house. There we go. All right, so uh, first down, first down. What did we think of the the Bayou disaster down in New Orleans? Go ahead, J.C. There you go. Uh, well, like guess, uh, well, we got Badgen throwing four interceptions. Uh, not good. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's pretty well said. I mean, it's you facts. Know. It's facts. Sure it's beat to the point. Yeah, completely to the point. Um, we did have some pretty good offense when they first got the ball. They moved down the field pretty well, and then it just disappeared. I don't know what happened with the play calling. Um, I mean, t- we had... A Cole Komet with two touchdowns that looked pretty decent. Um, but where is, you know, where's number two? I, I don't see them targeting number two. I know he's getting double teamed, but what is going on with not getting your number one receiver the ball? I mean, I, I he had a great catch and the end zone, but he, it you know, was great defense. He missed it, he dropped it, and it wasn't a touchdown there. I think they went for a field goal, if I'm not mistaken. Mm-hmm. But yeah, he's been double teamed and he's hurting my fantasy league, so <laughs> not good. We we'll see what you care about. We we'll see what you care about. Well, you know, he makes enough money for all four of us. I'm just speaking out loud, so, and so you know, yeah. I want to win that league. But um, but no, so I just thought if they're not, yes, he is double teamed, but um, you got to be more creative in your play calling if you want him to actually catch the ball and be the number one receiver. That the reason why we got him, right? That's exactly right. That's right. I even kind of quiet today. He's, he's, I'm waiting for the rant. I'm waiting for him to go off. Your mic is out, still muted, sir. <laughs> Wait, what was that? I didn't know your question was to directed to me. I thought you were talking to Steven there. Yeah, well, just it's open. <laughs> it's an open floor forum today. It's it's four of us, so it's going to be a little wild and and uh, dysfunctional. Like no one on the weekend, right? Yeah, now. exactly. It's going to be very dysfunctional. <laughs> so I mean, we look we're looking at the Bears' offense that looked pretty good at the beginning, and the ball is moving, and then we come back and we don't have the same continuity. I guess you know the other team is making adjustments, and we're not adjusting to their adjustments. The double team to DJ Moore. How can we get that that boy more involved? I mean, 
one idea would probably be move Valen Jones to the to the bus and, and stuff him in uh, underneath the, the the bus with the luggage, and let DJ Moore run that reverse. Look, it just just give up on Valus Jones. I'll just say that <laughs> the Valus Jones experiment is done. Uh, it, you know, not only did he personally give up two wins, and I believe that he gave up two wins uh, last year, but he just continues to make mistake after mistake. Wide open touchdown passes, fumbles. It, it just, I've seen enough. I've seen enough. You got to admit defeat at a certain point. The age doesn't benefit him at all. No. So I'm just, I don't want to see Vales Jones anymore. On top of that, I don't want to see the fucking wide receiver reverse, re, uh, reverse anymore. Like that is said and done. Deontay Foreman is a starter. Stop taking him out. Utilize utilize the power running game like we were talking about. 12, 13 man formations. I don't understand why we're just why we go right to spread. It seemed like they were, like I said before, like they're trying to force feed Tyson Bajan to I, I don't know, maybe just become the man instantly. Maybe he believe maybe Luke Getty believes in him wholeheartedly, but it just seemed like Tyson Bajan was thrown to the wolves the past couple weeks and where they just put it all on his shoulders. I know they get I, I know they're getting behind, but you're trying to develop this young man, not fucking go ahead and just say, here, here you go. Here's here's a, a a couple of all pro ends, you know, in Bosa and in Mac. And here's another good, good, pretty good defense uh coming up again uh, in the Saints. It's it just seemed like they're putting too much on the kid and not utilizing the power run game like we talked about before. It it works. It's been working. Why go away from it? Anybody want to chime in on that? <laughs> well, my only, my only concern on this is they just announced Herbert's coming back. Hmm. So now where do you add him into the... I, I would say just continue to pound the because rock. To me, like you need to keep running for him. Yeah. I, for, Foreman is the starter until he gets hurt. I mean, the, the boy had 20, 20 carries and 83 yards. Um, that's pretty efficient right there. I still think he needs another five to 10 more carries per game. Like ride the horse and make them stop the run. And then that'll open your play action. That'll open your spread offense. Well, if you're going to, if you're going to go Absolutely away agree. from Foreman though, if you're going to go away from Foreman, get those other guys. Like I said, 10, uh, 25 to 30 carries is what you really need from your running backs. Like he gets, Luke gets, he gets too cute. When he uh, once they started to get in a groove, it seemed like, like I said, it, it reminds me of Matt Nagy a lot, where they they started to run the ball and it looked good with, with you know David Montgomery, and then all of a sudden they just what fuck that shit. We're gonna toss it out the window and we're gonna go with what I want to do. So it just seems like a little bit of selfishness from the offensive coordinator, in my opinion. Go ahead, JC. No, to me, in my opinion, again, if. With, with Foreman, it's that downhill running style. It's that, hey, I'm going to lunch pail. I'm going to come eat that ground up. And like I said, you know what? To me, as far as I'm concerned, Herbert, take a seat on the bench. Like, Foreman has shown that he's going to eat up the ground. And to me, he deserves 20 carries a game. Plus. Yeah, I mean, he had a great uh, run uh, before he almost, you know, got... Uh, Cutted by the leg, right? Yeah, they tackled by shoelaces. Yeah, it would have been a touchdown, right? Right. Yeah. So, I mean, I agree with you guys. He's a stud. You know, he's got tree trunks for legs, and he can't be stopped <laughs> unless, well, in that scenario. But uh, he's good. You know, he, he reminds me a lot of of uh, um, what is his dad just had his name on top of my t- tip of my Not tongue. Matt Forte. No, no, no. Um, he on uh, the Super Bowl bear, Bears, the running back we had, Thomas Jones. Thomas Jones. Yeah. Like the the the, fero- the ferociousness that he runs is like I'm gonna run over everybody. I don't care, you know. He has he has that mentality, and you know, yes, they're gonna bring back you know uh, uh, that running back that we just uh, mentioned. But you looking at um, you know Ro- you got Roshan Johnson as well, two carries, six yards. If you're supposed to develop him, you've got to give him some carries. And if Herbert's coming back, who's who's gonna miss uh, uh, lose carries? It shouldn't be Foreman. It should be one or the other. It should be Bajan, really. <laughs> he should not be running because if he gets hurt, we're screwed. Right. 
All right, let's move over to second down. We got uh, a new bear. A new bear that's a little expensive sweaty. Expensive bear, by the way. An expensive bear. So, you know, we were really discussing was the trade worth it without everything in place? You know, we didn't know what the parameters were. And I'm pretty sure the two teams and, and the agents talked about the uh, the compensation and also the uh, re-signing or the extension of uh, Sweat. So um, now that the ink is dry and he's uh, an expensive bear, what do you guys think of the trade? Is it now a valuable trade or is it something that, you know, they just do to, to save their jobs? Uh, in, in my personal opinion, I, I mean, Jose can tell you, I freaked out when they made the trade mm -hmm. with no extension in place. Right. Um, one, once the extension is in place, it's like, okay, uh, acceptable. Right. But like I said, when, when there was no extension in place, I lost my shit. <laughs> yeah, because essentially it's a number one, a low number one pick. Essentially is what they gave up. I mean, you're talking, you're looking to replace Ejac. You're... Oh, we look frozen. They're looking to replace Cody Whitehair. I mean, that is to take that those positions is in that second, third round. So to give up a two five potential two ten somewhere in that range, and like I said, not have an extension at all in place. Uh, to me, it was just like, here we go again. Ivan. No, I mean, I, I agree. I, I to see where the immediate fear came in because i was just like all right that's that's nice but you know what if he's disgruntled you know you never know the personality of the player until you get him in here i mean yeah. and, you know until we can see him with the media us as fans and actually get to hear him out but he didn't seem like he was disgruntled he just seemed like you know a lot was coming at him quickly you know um he didn't know if he was going to get a contract with us if there were if the bears are going to offer up the right amount but in the end you know i gotta give ryan uh polls credit like and i've said that he's been kind of hit or miss in my opinion and he's found a couple starters in the draft but like as far as free agents are concerned and i'll consider i know it's a trade but i really consider it like an extension of free agency they went ahead and got uh, ahead of the line. Sweat. Yeah, ahead of the line. They went ahead and picked up Sweat before anybody could fucking go ahead and get it. He wasn't going to reach free agency with Atlanta being, you know, right on the heels of the Chicago Bears. So go ahead, get ahead of the game, bring him in here. And, but you, but like, you know, like JC was saying, the fear was they didn't have a contract. What's going to happen? Is this going to, is this going to happen in season? And luckily, you know, for us that they did do their due diligence and they were able to go ahead and strike a deal and that, you know, Ryan Poles, he, although he is young and he has made mistakes, there is some good to what he's been doing. And there is uh, things that I like uh, about him and about the direction he wants to take the football team. It's just when you're losing like this. Everything gets amplified, especially something, especially when you're a losing team and you go at, um, and you make a splash of a trade like this. Everybody's questioning you why. Well, why is the Bears think that they're going to take a step next year? The Bears have are going to have a lot of money next year. The Bears have two top ten draft picks potentially mm -hmm. coming up next year. the The sky is the limit for them. So why not get ahead of the game instead of getting in a bidding war and probably overpaying you? you know you reached a deal that both sides seem to be comfortable with so i'm i was like like jc said skeptical at first although i like the player but you know credit to ryan pulse for getting the job done quickly mm. Jason, go ahead steven yeah you know i agree with you guys i just you know he got all the money the contract and stuff like that now i'm not one to count someone's money right but hmm. he's what top hmm. <laughs> he's what top uh five paid correct in his uh position i believe so well he's pretty young he's what right. under, he's under 30 so i mean he's in his prime so i mean you know you kind of i don't know cleo mack and all these defensive players that they had roquan smith didn't get the money and then we spent on this guy i mean i get the age difference i get everything about it it's a great move i just feel like you're getting rid of a piece roquan smith 
then you get this guy and then it's like you don't have any other pieces to compliment him to help the defense out it just seems like it's just him i mean it's a great move i just feel like they need to fix the defense of for every position I mean, Tremaine, and not just one tremaine edmonds i mean they brought in guys tj edwards like they're mm -hmm. they're gonna continue to they they're gonna i, I think they're gonna try to work something out with jalen johnson we'll see but i i think that they have been making moves on the defense like the first few draft picks of ryan Poles tenure well, were defense. defensive players yeah yeah so i think they they really saw before they you know coming in that the defense was the worst unit on this on the on the, on the team mm. the offense they had some pieces i guess you could say that could keep them afloat but i really think that they've been building that defense to where they can make a, a, a move like this it was just you know is ryan poles comp enough to get a deal done and you know did he read the room well enough to not make a mistake in you know overpaying not, not necessarily you know not only overpaying but giving in to demands that probably he didn't have to and losing a player or or just not you know uh connecting with with the the owner of the agency and losing the player like he was able to do it quickly and got it done to silence any doubt yeah, I, I, I mean, I know you had said, like, uh, sky's the limit for next season. I feel like everyone was saying that for this season. So I hope next season actually does pan out like we uh, expected to. Well, I mean, I've, all this, the Bears really depend on if we have a good quarterback. And we still are asking that question, which kind of gives you the answer. If you're still asking questions about a quarterback in his fourth year, then the question is you don't have a, a franchise quarterback. It's as simple as that. Now, to the point that Ivan made about, you know, uh, Jalen Johnson, uh, Ryan Post came out in a press conference, you know, the day after the after the um, the trade deadline, and said, you know what, we want Jalen here. I told him that to his face. We had a face to face meeting. Um, he wanted to look, uh, you know, he got surprised when they went to, to look for a trade. He said, "Go ahead." But this is what we want for compensation because we regard you this highly. And people are like, "Well, he only has one, uh, two interceptions." for the year yeah but they don't throw to his side so he is a deterrent for offenses not to not to throw that way because he, he plays pretty good cover now they're gonna sign him there's no way they're they're not going to sign him because that'll be that'll set the precedent that we're not going to take care of our homegrown guys and you don't want that as an organization of not taking care of your long, homegrown guys you got leonard floyd who left became a pretty decent player roquan again pretty decent player like you had this this I know there was a different regime that drafted them and they wanted to get rid of them and they were getting paid and you, you don't want to pay an off uh was it off linebacker that much money if he's not a middle linebacker and getting all the sacks but he's a pretty good player and it would have been a good compliment to what we have here all right we're moving on um <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we can move on. We can move on. Um, Justin Fields, um, he is still up in the air for his uh, availability on Thursday. Is it the right time to bring him back? You're looking at Justin Fields coming back this Thursday uh, with what? Two days, three days of worth of practice, maybe two days in a walkthrough. Um, we don't know his grip strength. We don't know if he's going to have that uh, hand heavily taped and how effective can he be? So is it worth to bring him back? In my opinion, if he's uh, ready to go uh, and the training staff says he's good to go, you got to put him back out on the field. Um, we've kind of seen what Badgen can do, and it's mediocre at best. Yeah. Um, like I said, now we are we're evaluating: is Fields the guy? Do we give him a five-year, you know, the fifth year extension? Right. Do we move on from him? We have a quarterback class that is looking stacked you got Pinnix, you got uh drake may you got caleb williams and we're sitting with two very highly you know touted draft picks that we could potentially even still take a quarterback and you know reset the timeline before we have to pay justin fields 50 million dollars a year mm -hmm. go ahead jump in guys <laughs> uh yeah i mean i agree with jc i i if I feel like the last couple of years we've had that same discussion with Mitch, we've had it, you know, now with Justin and then now with uh, Tyson. So it's like uh, ever since Cutler was done, it's kind of like 
you know, who's in, who's going to be the guy. So I, I don't know. We have the money, but it's just if we're still asking again these questions, do we really want to see how it goes with him? Plus with his finger, I mean, he's going against Carolina. It's a great kind of um, story, right? The first one draft pick and then the, the Bears gave up and then it's Justin Fields against Stroud. No, right? No. Right. Right. Yes, uh, it is. It yeah, and and then it's just going up that, so it's like uh, nice publicity for the NFL. But other than that, I mean, I I would just keep Tyson in there, maybe maybe one more week, and then have Justin come in. I mean, we're not going anywhere, so just let you know his hand, his thumb, you know, heal, yeah. heal, Ivan. If he's ready to go, put him in. Like that's my my mm-hmm. thing. Uh, I've seen enough. Like JC was saying, I've seen enough. Of Tyson Bajan to see that, you know, the kid has potential, but he's a number two quarterback. You know, he he's at, at our team, at least. He's our number two quarterback. Justin, you know, with all the criticism and all the doubt, I still think that you need to give him this year to fully see what you have with him before you go make any decisions. Now, quite frankly, if you're sitting at number one, I'm thinking Caleb Williams is probably going to be the pick, right? If, if you're sitting at number one. Right now, it's Arizona. If it's Drake May, I'm I'm still thinking, because you're going to have a few quarterbacks in this class, like, you know, like JC had mentioned, that are quality quarterbacks, or, or at least young enough to where a, a, a new OC and a new head coach will be intrigued at, you know, molding them into what they want them to be. But... For me, it's like I think that the Bears would end up trading one of those picks to the highest bidder if Justin Fields can show that you know there is there is a reason to keep him, and that's going to be have to be you know more of. And I know it's going to be the Panthers, although it's the Panthers, it's still an NFL team, but he needs to be perfect out there. Like he needs to a hundred plus rating, you know. 270 some yards two touchdowns like on average like you need to you need to string these things together but is the question is is do i trust the offensive coordinator to go ahead and put him in position to do that because you've seen things even with even with tyson bajant that are not working with tyson bajant you know like the, the things that do work with tyson bajant like oh okay nice tyson is quick he's decisive but then there's times where you put, like I said, you start putting more on his plate, and he's making mistakes. And then you're taking away the running backs, uh, the running backs' uh, ability to make any type of a, a, a of a impact. Uh, impact, thank you. A- impact in the game. So it's it depends on Luke Getzey. Like regardless of what quarterback is, is in there, it depends on him. But I fear like I fear we're just gonna go ahead and restart. We're gonna keep a guy like Tyson Bajant. Justin's going to end up leaving, and you're gonna draft a quarterback, you know, at some point in the draft. Like you, you have, you you have a great thing going with those two picks. Now whether you, you know, get the guy you want or the guy sitting there that you want, that's yet to be seen, because we haven't, you know, we haven't gone through it. We're still in the middle of the year. Right. But we'll see what happens i i really like to see justin bounce back from adversity but it's the clock's running out on him yeah I, I i support him full wholeheartedly but the clock's running out you got to start performing game after game after game all right yeah i mean when i'm looking at what, what are the comments that are being said we're looking at justin field the time is ticking um is the fifth year going to option going to be picked up he might be trade bait this this uh, this draft, you know. He might be flipped, and the fact that you have two high draft picks uh, in the first round that are going to be super valuable, I think that they it is necessary to draft a quarterback if you know that this is not the guy. If you keep saying I need more time, I need more time, the, the, the time is running out. It's as simple as that. The kid can't read defense fast enough. Um, and that's probably a deterrent to him. He holds the ball way too long. We've talked about this endlessly on the podcast for the couple, last couple of years. He holds the ball way too long. It, is it that he's not reading the defenses or is he waiting for the perfect pass? We don't have that type of offense. It's as simple as that. And you can't continue to run him like that if he's going to continue to get injured because our offensive line is not that great. 
maybe after this draft they will be but not right now we're looking at a lot of adjustments especially when you're looking at those again those two high draft picks what are they going to do with them are you going to fix your offensive line you're going to fix your defensive line are you going to flip them and get more picks are you going to draft a quarterback and draft one of the high end wide receivers that can be a game changer there's a lot of possibilities and to be honest with you i think that ryan poles this draft will determine how long he will be the gm for the bears because you cannot continue to fuck this up when you have generational quarterbacks in this draft. Correct me if I'm wrong. Wasn't Kyle Orton a backup? Yeah, and then he played. And he paid played his yes, starter. He yeah, he was. He beat Green Bay. So I just got to say, I'm going to defend Tyson on this one. You could be a backup and still be a starter in this league and win. Uh, so so was Tom Brady. Tom Brady was a backup to Drew Bledsoe until he got hurt. And then right, he right, never right. got his so, job back. So yeah, I, I, I don't really think there's nothing wrong with 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 Beijing. He's a rookie. He's going to make yeah. mistakes. And like I said, he's being force fed shit that he cannot do. It's he's as being simple cru- as that. Uh, crucified all the time. It's as simple as that. And I think mm-hmm. it, it, he gets. He does the same exact thing to Justin. Instead of adjusting your game plan to what the kid can do, and and then just you know then modify it to the defense that it's presented in front of you, whether it's cover. Uh, cover two, cover three, whatever it might be, or if it's man, like if it's man, boo, this is your play. If it's fucking, you know, if they're playing zone, this is, should be your play. These should be options. Like motherfucker, be Tom, uh, like uh, Peyton Manny at the line. Call everything out. Hopefully you can do that. But the problem is that they get to the line with five, six seconds, and he has to make an, a, a quick adjustment. It's not going to happen. I see Beijing doing that though. Beijing does call out a lot of stuff. Omaha, for example. <laughs> So, <laughs> uh, I mean, here's here's what I will here's what I'll say about Bajan. Bajan, his All right, JC, you're breaking up a little. His dropbacks are go. faster than Justin Fields. Yeah, he's getting to his first, his second, his third. We're talking about, you know, he's doing everything right, but the fact that he's an undrafted free agent from a small school, these defenses are disguising their defenses to where the it's just the little mistakes where he's not. He hasn't had enough time on the field to where he can really see, you know, hey, this guy's going to come back or this this DB is disguising what he's doing. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I know where, you know, that's the beautiful thing about Tom Brady. Tom Brady, almost every single play before he even got the snap, knew pre-snap where the ball was going, what the entire defense was doing. Bajan. He, he's very good once he gets the ball in his hands. But again, it's it's that he hasn't had enough time in a pro, you know, where defenses are disguising what they're doing. And he's just making simple mistakes. But again, he is getting the ball out on time. He's making the right reads. You know, he's getting to his drop back faster than Justin Fields. Um, I would watch the video where, you know, they were basically showing, you know, seven step drop. Justin Fields was hitting his last, you know, step at three seconds. where Bajan was hitting it at 2.5. So again, it's, it's just, there's something there with Bajan, but right now he is the number two. Would Bajan be a more productive quarterback if he was being groomed by Andy Reid or maybe in Philadelphia or um, who else has a good quarterback? <laughs> you know, one of those, you know, why don't you want to say, you know, New England anymore because they have a pretty good quarterback and, and it's just not working up there. But would he be better in an Andy Reid for per se offense where you have two guys who are really good at working with quarterbacks? And I know Nagy didn't work out here, but he also was given Mitch. He, he didn't want Mitch. JC, oh, yeah. go ahead. I even, I even go ahead. Somebody, somebody well, jump in. In, somebody in jump my in. opinion. <laughs> go ahead, JC. Well, to, to me, uh, like, I'll just I'll just go with, we, we've already seen Nagy try to work with a quarterback in Turbisky. So how did that work out? I, 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 how does it work out in Pittsburgh? Because he's gotten better coaching in Pittsburgh and he's not any better. So I would, at this point, I can't even blame Nagy now. Because he also said that Justin Fields wasn't ready and we pushed him out there. And he's still not ready. So maybe Nagy was right. I mean, <laughs> I, mean yeah, I mean, yeah, it's, it's, yeah, he still, he still tried to make Mitch 
do things Mitch couldn't do. Uh, so, yes and no. Uh, all right, yes and no. I'm, I'm not going to go ahead and let Nagy off the hook. No, not completely. Not completely. But the, to the question, would he be better off with Andy Reid? I, I mean, even with Matt Nagy there, Andy's the guy in charge. Yeah, so Andy, yeah. Different. Yeah. You know, and uh, Matt Nagy's there more of a, a, a of a cheerleader, like a Houdini Brown, you know, to Muhammad Ali. He's a pom like, pom girl. Yeah, yeah, he's a cheerleader. He's a he's a hype <laughs> man. He's a hype man. He's like, here's your he's iPad. A hype man. He's a hype man. To here's some water, sir. So, so like for me, seeing him with a guy like Andy Reid, I think he would find some success. Yes, I don't trust these coaches. No. I don't trust Luke Luke Getzey. I don't trust Matt Eberflus. Um, it, regardless of what you know, uh, what they may be as as far as like you know, the quality of the person, it just hasn't been working out. Five and was it five and twenty, five and twenty five, something like that. Uh, uh, that that he, his record, it's just you, that's not enough. I don't care. I don't care if the team was reloading next year. You know what I'm saying? And they were rebuilding and, and tearing everything down. You had situations last year where you guys were in one possession games and he ended up losing now that's supposed to be corrected this year the packers suck the broncos aren't good the bucks are are a beatable team like these are all winnable games and we go into this year not doing not doing anything that they talked about so it's it's gonna be a difficult decision for 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 the bears coming up with how they want to want to move forward because you have the GM that likes the head coach and you have the entire Bears nation that are pretty much done with what they've seen. Yeah, I, I, I agree. It's just there's a lot to manufacture, a lot to figure out in the next couple of years. Um, you know, most teams will build a team first and then find a quarterback and, you know, get a veteran quarterback to uh, make it um, palatable or, or be able to win. Or people do the opposite, where you get the the rookie quarterback uh, first, and then start building afterwards. So it's there's no pure for, formula, and uh, the Bears have done it um, completely wrong in both situations. But now that we have done that, we're gonna punt it over to the the Thursday night game versus Carolina. JC, what is your prediction of this outcome? Uh, my prediction, and God, I hope it comes true, is that Justin Fields starts and that just for the sake of our having a better pick, that we can keep Carolina down so that we can, you know, hopefully continue to the trend of them having a higher pick. And if we unfortunately have to have a higher pick or a later pick, you know, so be it. But let's continue to keep Carolina down there. Uh, where we can hopefully get that, uh, you know, at least the first or second, third pick uh, in this upcoming draft. That's what I'm hoping for. Do you have a score for us, JC? Oh, oh God. Uh, if Justin Fields starts, uh, hopefully 24-10. Um, if Badgen starts, man, I'm happy with a 16-17 to, 16 to 17, uh, game there. There you go. So, like I said, that, that would be my guesses. Steven, what's your prediction and score? Yeah, I, I'm going to go in the same boat as that. I mean, I agree with JC about having uh, Justin Fields starts. If he doesn't, you know, it's going to be a low-scoring game. So I would say if Tyson starts, I go with 10-17. Um, whoever, I would hope for the Bears to win if that was the case. Um, and then even if it was with Justin, just because of his thumb, I'd give it the same kind of scoring. So, But hopefully the Bears pull this one out. On uh, Thursday, Ivan prediction and score. So I'm gonna say, like I said, I'm gonna save the score, but I'll tell you the Bears are gonna win. Oh, does it matter who the quarterback is? Um, no, I, yeah, yo, well, yes, yes. I don't think I don't think the quarterback's gonna matter in this situation. I think the Bears are gonna win. In my opinion, I I feel like it should be all Deontay Foreman, like we were talking about before. It should be his revenge game. Uh, we'll see if Luke Getze can realize that and, you know, follow suit and utilize him the proper way. But with that being said, I think that the Bears pull this one out. It'll be a close game like JC was talking about. You know, uh, I don't think it's going to be something that uh, I don't think it's going to be a blowout by the Bears. But 
it'll be a close game. Uh, Justin Fields, if he does return, I think Justin Fields kind of slowly comes back. I, I, I really think that you should consider the thumb. I know Steven was talking about him sitting out another week, which is smart. Like, I really think I it, would. It, it's smart. But it, in this case, I think the player, the organization, and the fan base are, like, they're thinking about his career as of right now. Mm-hmm. And, you know, you being out on the uh, on the sideline and not showing toughness because that's where they'll go. You know what I'm saying? Cutler didn't come back in with a torn MCL. You know, and I, and I get it. But if the kid, it, you know, if he's still young. You don't want to go rush him back. But if he's ready to go, put him in there. Let's see what happens. Let's get going. Yeah. Um, I, uh, you know, if, if Justin plays, I, I still think it's it's a tight game, whether it's Tyson or or – or Justin, I do think that uh, if Justin plays, I think it's a higher scoring game. I think it's like a 28 to 10, 28 14 Bears win. With Bachin, it'll be a closer game. I think it'll be 24 18, 24 18, something in that in that ballpark. Um, with an, uh, that, I think that the Bears should win that one as well. It doesn't matter what the quarterback is, but um, it, it's a crapshoot. It's really a crapshoot because we don't know what's going to happen with this team because they show up for two and a half quarters and then when the other team makes an adjustment it, it just it all falls apart especially in the fourth quarter where we've been completely outscored all right so uh we're gonna punt into a commercial jc thanks for joining us hopefully you can join us every monday for football talk uh we'll, thank you for coming in and uh we'll see you next week jc yeah uh thank you guys for having me on uh, unfortunately, most of uh, this uh, has been breaking in and out, and I'm trying to keep up with the combo, <laughs> but it's been buffering like crazy. So, yeah, uh, you know, <laughs> it's I, all uh, good. Text Jose, I text Jose during it. I'm like, I'm like, man, I am having trouble keeping up with who's talking, whatever, because all of a sudden, like, it's just spinning wheels, and I'm like, oh, geez. <laughs> oh, <man. laughs> oh. yeah, that that happens. Cycle difficulties all over the place. That happens all the time. But uh, JC, thanks for joining us. We'll see you next yeah. week for the uh, conclusion of this uh, Thursday night game. All right, brother, take care. Thank you, guys. Thanks for having me on, guys. Anytime, anytime. All right, we'll be right back with the loop after a word from our sponsors. Let's hit that button, baby. Hey, true Chicago sports fans, show off your Chicago pride with some fresh clothes from Grit Clothing Company. Grit Clothing Company. At Grit Clothing, they create that simple yet classic style that represents that Chicago Southside lifestyle. From t-shirts to hoodies, hats to glassware, they've got you uh, Something happened to Jose. Um, he got disconnected, to so you're going to so sit with me right for a little now. bit. At, it's, it's uh, this is part there. of No Water <laughs> on the Week. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Oh God! Transitioning over to no water on the weekend. Um, no. <laughs> Let me say it again. That's gritclothingco.com and use the promo code TRUEFAN15 for fifteen percent off of your entire order. Hey guys, it's Steven. And this is Sean, and you are listening to True Chicago Sports Fans. Don't forget to listen to No War on the Weekend, new episodes on Monday. You can find us anywhere you listen to podcasts. Yeah, so we're going to go do a couple of shots, so let's kick it back over to Big Z. No War on the Weekend. Thanks, Sean. Thanks, Sean. Uh, he's back in the States yeah, now. Yeah, thanks, Sean. Yeah, he's back, he's back in the States now. <laughs> yeah, he is. He definitely is. All right, boys, it's time to talk some baseball. I love talking baseball, and our Chicago teams have made tons of news. So this is three up and three down. Oh, wait, wrong button. Wrong button. I think I'll perplex him with my slow ball. One, two, three strikes. You're out. All right, all right. I know you guys are excited to talk about this. Probably excited, yes. most exciting thing to talk about all week. The Cubs. The Cubs have a new manager by the name of Craig Council. He sounds a little familiar. If you're an old head, you remember him playing. And if you're a new head, you know he was the coach, the manager up north at Wrigley North in Wisconsin. At Ma- uh, yeah, we, yeah, it's Wrigley North. Let, let's, right, let's right. Be, let's Absolutely. completely be honest there. It is Wrigley North. And I, ho- I can't wait till they tear down that stadium because it's, uh, it's a beautiful stadium, but they have no AC. So can't wait to tear that down. Oh, uh, God, it's, uh, it's, remember, do you remember yes, that? Yes, yes. How sweaty it was? It was like uh, 114 degrees inside that stadium. Terrible. 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 Thank you, Chuck. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> All right, boys. Uh, tell me what you were doing when you heard the news. 
I was in the toilet and uh, <laughs> no, I was kidding. Um, <laughs> no, I generally, you know, I was like just on my phone sitting on the couch and this broke. Uh, I was crying because uh, the day before, I believe um, Cody Bellinger wanted to opt out of his contract and I was a little uh, disappointed that he wants to be a free agent, but uh, hey, give him whatever he wants. Put a check right in front of him, you know, get Pete Alonso, you know, just just do what he wants. But I was really happy. I am happy. I've been sending you guys in the group chats of all these Milwaukee fans that are peeved. But I want to know how David Ross feels and how he was broken, like the news, because that's also like interesting to me. Yeah. Go ahead. They had to have brought him into the office. I would imagine he got brought in. Yeah. Respect, respectively. Yeah. Got brought in and they were like. David, thank you for your time. Thank you for getting us through some of the toughest times post World Series. You know, uh, you were manager of, technically, we were manager of a playoff team, right? uh, Correct. They did go to the playoffs one year. So you coached in the playoffs. Are you managing the playoffs? But it just, it seemed to me like there was so many little mistakes that were keeping the Cubs out of games or, you know, either eliminating them completely or just, you know, not benefiting them that I'm sure as a young manager, you can outgrow and you can learn from. The problem is, is that the Cubs are ready to go. Like Mm -hmm. 2024 was the target date. I believe Mm -hmm. that they said, Hey, we're going to be ready to go. So like true to their word, they're ready now. And Craig Council is a, a manager that's managed in his hometown, uh, or you know, his favorite team is his, his home state around his hometown. I believe he, he lived around Milwaukee. If I'm and not his, mistaken, and I'm his dad, yeah, and his dad used to work for yeah. for the Brewers as well. Right. Okay. Th- there you go. So he's Brewer through and through. Right. He's a Brewer. You know, for him to come over here with the way he's made, the way he took the Brewers, the way that they're built, this is fucking go time. Because they're going to give the guy who did more with less money. Yes. And they're going to give him big time players that are, you know, uh, that are a sign of, hey, this the Cubs are back. Or at least back in the hunt. Mm-hmm. No more fucking around. I'm happy with that. I'm, I'm ecstatic. I, I'm like, I... I woke up from a nap. So I was putting the kids to bed, or, or putting the baby to, to sleep. You needed a nap. I woke up to a text. The Cubs got counts. I'm like, counts? I'm like, who the fuck is it? I was like, what? <laughs> what? I was like, what are you talking Who's about? going to counseling? And, and, and Who's drinking exactly. again? I was like, what? If? And, then I, and then I saw the picture. I was like, oh my God. Yeah. Like, this is this is awesome. I'm, I'm so happy about it. Yeah. I mean, I don't, I, you know, I am ecstatic. Uh, I just know the guy has not, you know, gone far in the playoffs, and that's my only concern. But he has a bit. We have a better team, so he had like seven players hitting under two twenty five. <laughs> I mean, the fact that they got to the playoffs is because of the pitching staff that they they had. Um, yeah, I mean, like to Ivan's point with David Ross, they they literally gave him the Ricky treatment. They're like, hey, bro, thanks for all the work you did working with the kids. You know, being the dad. Taking them out to Chuck E. Cheese, you did a great Doing job. Doing your daddy job, that yeah, you did, you did a great job. And uh, you know we're, we're going to give you a nice compensation package uh, while you walk out the door. And uh, you know, thank you for all everything that you've done. Um, go go down to the south side and go work for them for a little bit. Uh, and it's you know it's exactly what they did. And they hired Madden. And then once they hired Madden, you're like, this is the hottest manager that, that he's been going to the playoffs for years and years and years. And this guy's a fucking stud. And guess what? You got your championship. They made the right hire for the right players to spend money to put them in contention, and they were in contention for 15, 16, 17, you know, for for multiple years, and that's what you want. Uh, You know, you want a chip in a chair, right? You want to be able to sit at at the poker table. You know, even if you got one chip, you know, you still have a chance of winning a big pot. So they hired the right manager. Now, they also brought back Hendricks. And I thought Hendricks had a dead arm all year. Hopefully that's not the case. And he is your number five. But the Cubs will be spending in free agency. And now the Cubs are actually realistically in the Otani 
sweepstakes. As a player, or, or as far as players are concerned, yeah. Oh, you know what? As far as like remnants, non, you know, uh, office types of the 2016 championship, Kyle Hendricks is it. Game seven starter. You know, you gotta. We talk about it with with Chicago. You gotta keep some of the guys. Uh, you gotta stay loyal to some of these guys, right? Yeah. And Kyle Hendricks, to you know, by everything I've seen, has been a model citizen. <laughs> you know what I mean? Right. Like, yeah. Hundred percent. A model citizen has just done his job. Is one of the better pitchers in the league when healthy, and what? and yeah. you know, and, and he's ready to go. And he's so meticulous with with his craft that you know he's he's involved in everything and he's involved in talking to younger players he's an asset uh, as a locker room leader you know what i mean especially in the in in, as as a pitching staff is concerned so i i I love keeping him now it's just like where do you go from here right like Mm -hmm. steven i'm sure you think big time baby like let's go pedal to the metal Right. Zero to go 100. after a Juan Soto. Yes. Go after a Pete Alonso. Go after Otani. Go after a, a, a Aaron Nola. Go after, you know, Otani. But the thing about Otani, right? This is the thing about Otani. You don't have to give him 10 years. You don't have to give him 10 years. You don't have to give him 10 years. But, but. You're going to have teams that are going to be willing to give him whatever he wants, right? In the Dodgers, in the Yankees. And, and they're going to do that shit. For me, I'm I'm just like, okay, we're, we're are the Cubs this guy away? I don't I don't think that they are. And they could go ahead and pay a fee, you know, they could go ahead and try to spread out as much as they can to pick up quality pieces in order to make this jump that they're trying to make next year. I agree with that, with what you're saying, Ivan, because he's not going to be pitching next year. He's just going to be a hitter, right? I know. He's a deadly hitter. He's a great hitter. He's a fucking great hitter. No, he is. He's an absolute stud. I'm I'm with you. I'm with you, though. Put in stone 45 home runs or more at Wrigley. No, he would. At just at Wrigley. I'm not talking about on the road. He's going to hit 44, 45 home runs at Wrigley. It is and the smallest ballpark. his best friend ballpark. is there, too. His best friend is there? Well, they're yeah. friends. They're friends. Uh, they're not best friends. I, I want to say best friends. But, of course. You know. yeah. I hope they're best friends. I mean, like, yeah. Me, too. <laughs> <laughs> hey, maybe even me being a I'm Sox a fan, fan, this is exciting to hear about the Cubs because, like we said last week, we're starving for a good team. If the mm-hmm. Cubs are fucking winning, then so be it. You know what? I'm going to watch the Cubs games. And, I, and I've been watching the Cubs game because we got a report on them. But the Cubs are fun to watch. It's very simple. The Cubs are fun to watch. You do go after Juan Soto. You do go after Pete Alonso. You do fill out the pitching staff. There's not a lot of pitching depth out there. I mean, you can sign Clevenger. He pitched great for us. I think he'd be give him a one-year deal with an option. See what he can do for you. Because this, you know, we pedal to the metal, right? I don't see your pitching staff as something that's scary. You don't have a scary dude. You don't have a scary number one. You don't have a, you know, like a Chris Sale who's like, holy shit, he's throwing 102 at me and it's coming from the side and that slider's fucking filthy. You know, we don't. you need something like that in those terms for a an, an ace. You need that. In, uh, in, in, yeah, in, in the starting rotation and in the back end of the yes, bullpen. Right. Yes, yes. Guys, mm-hmm. you need shut down players now they got a guy you know Cade Horton is, is somebody that's that's been you know uh out there that probably might make an appearance next year depending on what happens and how he pl- pitches uh you know they have uh, a few Wait. other guys yeah yeah they have a few other guys at arms that that is that are waiting to come up mm-hmm. the thing is, is for me the thing for me is I need to see like like Steven and, and I were saying like you know you had mentioned I need to see aggressive spending to go after the top quality talent period i get the bullpen i i, I mean i get the uh, farm system has is, is been up uh, you know up on the up and up but you still need to go after it if you want to make this jump that i think the cubs are trying to make this year yeah 100 percent. and we and we talk, talk about it bullpens are very finicky you could have the same set of guys one year suck, and then the next year they're great, and vice versa. 
bullpens are very, very streaky. And you know what? When there's a bullpen arm, what you do, if you're a contending team, you buy one. Uh, Mitch Carver was not given a qualifying offer, making him a free agent. Go after him. Go after that dude. That dude's a stud. The way he pitched in the world. Uh, 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 oh, oh, Carver, Carver. I thought you said Mitch Garver. Is it you, uh, the the DH the D uh, the Mitch Garver is a DH for Texas? Whoever whoever it was either one, uh, you yeah, it might be yeah. In the yeah, it might have been the DH. Either way, that he's a stud. I think you put him at DH. That'll be great for you. Uh, Montgomery's the other one, Jordan Montgomery. Mm. And you know what? He fits in right exactly with the Cubs. I think you know at thirty, he's willing. He's he's at that point where he's a, he's a crafty pitcher that can has pitched in big games. Uh, he was alongside Matt Scherzer. I mean, he's just got nothing. Yeah. What'd you say? Just won a World Series. Right, just won a World Series. I mean, yeah, you're gonna have to pay for him because he has that pedigree. But the dude's a stud. I mean, uh, let's see who else is out there. Sonny Gray. Don't be, don't be the White Sox, right? I mean, Stephen, right? Don't be, don't be fucking yeah. scared. Don't, don't be cheap. Don't, don't be scared. scared. Yeah, the White yeah. Sox are completely you're scared. Fucking, you're trying to win the damn World Series. Like this is signing a guy like Craig Council. I gotta say it again, because and, and, and I'm, not that you don't understand the significance, Jose, but this is just for I do. everybody out there. <laughs> fucking do. My team hasn't won shit. For everybody out there. That is a signal that it's go time. That is a signal that the Cubs need to start making aggressive moves to put themselves in place to sincerely be one of the top contenders come next year. Yeah. So I'm fully expecting them to be all in on free agency this year. I mean, you need to add a few pieces. And I'm talking about uh, if it's not a big name, it has to be a quality type of a, a of a player you know you, what i'm saying yeah you got uh, Aaron why nola not, why not a juan soto bro why not hey, why not I, I i literally i know i know those are big bats and big names but i would really focus on pitching first like your blake snell your Aaron nola your uh, excuse me montgomery uh josh Hader. them too fuck it well yeah, yeah if, the, if the checkbooks if the checkbooks are wide I open to be in a conversation and contending with like uh, or at least giving an offer to every single one of these big names. Like, I don't want us to be our head out of the ring at all. I want us to be like, oh, the Cubs are interested. Oh, the Cubs are interested. And the beauty of the signing with the coach, it wasn't even expected. Like, there was a beauty of it. It was like a sneak attack. Like, it was just came out of nowhere, mm -hmm. and it was done well. Uh, maybe not for David Ross, but, I mean, at the same time, it's like, it's like a, we got a Christmas present a lot early and something to be thankful for for Thanksgiving. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> now here's a question for you: Would you guys take a flyer on Lucas Giolito? Oh, you answer that one, Ivan. Damn, damn you. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, uh, I gotta ask the hard questions here, man. Look, look. Uh, I I wouldn't. This, this is this is what I'll say about the Cubs. They like to take those rec, uh, you know reclamation projects, right? They like to take those guys because you got a guy in Tommy Hadovy who's been pretty fucking good with how he's been operating his pitching staff. Um, you, you know, you look how he's dealt with nothing and then brought up, you know, quality talent. Uh, he, he's been coaching quality talent in guys like uh, Steele. He's been able to coach a veteran like Kyle Hendricks. He's been able Wicks. to coach. He, yeah, he's Wicks, Jordan Wicks. He's been able to coach a guy like Stroman who's had – some difficulties in some certain places he's gone he had no problems here except for the contract you know what i'm saying but for me it's it, it it should be both it should be both and then some i think the cubs post covid you know you gave us the covid excuse okay and and i get it's not necessarily an excuse but to the technical term it's an excuse mm -hmm. so you had the covid for the excuse You've been crying poor biblical losses for years now. This is the time that there's no more biblical. You had full seasons with full crowds. Even at the beginning of the year when you were struggling, you still put seat asses in the seats. Mm -hmm. It's time to spend. It's time to be serious as a ball club. You have all the glitz and glamour. The makeup is put on. The, now take the, her for the, the dance. The, the, yes. Take, take her to the dance. Yeah. Take her home. And then it's to the time. promised land. Yes. So so it is that a yes? Time. 
Is that a yes? Yes. There you go. I wouldn't take him. Why not? Uh, Why not? He's a quality know. arm. He went from one bad team, the White Sox, then went to the, a bad team in the Angels, and then went to another bad team in Cleveland. It'll, it'll be like, it, it'll be... He'll go to a winning culture. Go, no go, pressure. Go, this is what I say. He'll go... And I think I think a guy like Kyle Hendricks might be able to help. But... Okay, you, okay. I can see that. Right, right. Because because they have similar... Tra- even though Lucas is a little bit of a harder thrower, they have similar types of traits. But as you get older, you learn how you have to learn how to pitch. And I think Hendricks would be a great mentor to teach him, like, hey, bro, you can't throw 98 all the time. You're going to have to use your breaking balls and, and paint the corners, especially if you want to last long. And I think giving that kid a one or maybe a, a, a one year and a player option, hey, if you do well, then you'll get paid. If not, then, you know, sayonara. And he's very durable. He's rarely on, on the IL. Um Another name would be Jack Flaherty. Hmm. Jack Flaherty, yeah, uh, from the Cardinals. Also had an off year, but you consistent. Know, I would, I, uh, Jack Flaherty, I would go Jack Flaherty over Lucas Giolito. Okay. Yeah, I, I would, agree. I would, def- I would definitely do that because of Jack Flaherty. Jack Flaherty, he's, I know they were he, they were teammates, actually. Correct. Him and Lucas Giolito. Yep. So I, it would be crazy if they got both of them and tried to re, you know, try to fix both of them. Right. But like I said, man, if you got the money and you're able to put, if you're able to, and if it's just one of them, I'm fine with that. But if you're able to spend the money and put guys like this in positions of success and they mm-hmm. end up paying out for you, it's huge. Yeah. It's a huge, Cody Bellinger right. is the best example of that I could, I could give you. And we just saw it this year. The guy right. was down and out, got healthy, fixed his swing. Got you know, uh, uh, had a great year and was on the Cubs. Like, they they did a great job. He was a he was fan favorite and he was a great uh, a part of this team this year. Yep, so it's it all depends on it, all depends on how they go ahead and approach it. Is Lucas Giolito mentally able to bounce back? I think a guy like Jack Flaherty is better, I think, mentally from what I could see is probably the safer bet. I think Jack Flaherty could bounce back better than a guy like Lucas Giolito at this point, because the Sox were a disaster. I mean, mm-hmm. am I right, Steven? Just like, Still are, but you know, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> this is why yeah. the Cubs are getting more airtime this episode. Cause yes, <laughs> we're completely a disaster. Um, another player um, for your guys is Candelario, Jamie, uh, Jamir, 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 Candelario. Your third baseman, he's 30. Do you bring him back? I don't see why not, but it would have to be for like maybe a one year again, or maybe a one, I would say one year deal. I mean, he he doesn't, his defense is average at best at third base, but that bat, you know, is pretty good when he's right. healthy and in the lineup on a consistent basis. And that's what happened. You got David Ross, he would, he, this kid was hot, and then he would take him out of the lineup. I'm like, bro, ride the horse till it dies. Yeah, until I need some more water, you know? David, David, yeah, David tried to, like, he tried to spread it around, but it's just like, nah, bro, I I mean, even if you're cool with people. Ride the hot hand. Like, you got to go with, with, yeah, with the hot hand. So, again, it's, I I would, I would, I would kick the tires on Jamer because I like a switch hitting, you know, um, multiple defensive positional player. Right. But. It's one of those if players. You, much, if it's too much, it's too much. Isn't yeah, it? I think it's one of those players you make. You make a, a a decent offer, not too high. Don't insult him, and be like, "Hey, this is the offer. We're gonna explore other options. If you want to come back, you come back." Oh yeah, Ivan. <laughs> yeah. Okay, Otani to the White Sox, bro. I don't know what you're smoking, but if you're smoking that, <laughs> that good of a shit, you better pass that shit around because that is not. That is never going to happen. He wants. Ivan, he wants. Ivan, you're fucking high, and you know it. Oh yeah, I know it. <laughs> <laughs> Otani, Shohei, Shohei, Clemente, Otani. Yeah. After There's, what he did after after the revenge game, uh, the, 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 the so-called revenge game in the WBC. That's what yeah. we had. Mm-hmm. Oh man. That was our that was our guy. Like after after Puerto Rico got eliminated, we were just all Japan. Anyway, 
Shohei is never going there. No. We if, ne- anything, if anything, he'd be on the Cubs because, like I said, we're headed in the right direction. I, I, th- I really yeah. think it's going to be the Dodgers, San Francisco, uh, Texas. You take that back. <laughs> and I hope it is a Dodgers to so fucking stick it to you fuckers. Um, Dodgers, San Francisco, Texas. Uh, uh, the Cubs are in the mix. I think the Cubs are in the mix. I don't think they're a leading contender. Mm-hmm. But again, I think, you know, if they come out and they whine and dine them and, you know, say, hey, you know what? You're, you're, this is how much money we have in this truck and we're backing it in here. You know, that might be the, you know, the nail that, that, that closes that coffin. But I, I really think that you got the teams that that have that huge money like Texas and, and LA. Now, when you're saying Texas, you're saying Houston or the Rangers? The Rangers. The Rangers. Texas okay, Rangers. I just want to make sure because I wasn't here last week because I was a little hungover the next day. Uh, yeah. That's why I wasn't on the show. That's right. We got to give a shout out for your birthday. Yeah, d- d- appreciate it. I got to listen to it. Um, <laughs> I was planning on it, but you know, I forgot. You know, so. <laughs> um, but no, uh, I said the Rangers should do well, and uh, they actually won. Mm-hmm. We called it out. So. Yeah. We need a tally on this podcast, Jose, that uh, you show it, you know, when I give my perspective. It I'm the so audio ludicrous. guy. I don't do video yet. I haven't learned video. So if you want to learn some video and learn no, no, how to no, do you that. You could just cut up the audio and just run the clips back. That's, <laughs> That's you know, too much you, fucking work. You can work. do that. I'm uh, easy, man. You don't have to do that. I know I you're easy. Fun. I know you're easy. Mm-hmm. <laughs> All right. I'm really not quick. easy. I won't go to the White Sox, but you know. Yeah. <laughs> You've been to more White Sox games than Cubs games this year, sir. Yeah, was, it's for the food, Jose. Yeah, it is. Like, yeah, gotta, and the beer. It is. It is for the food. Hey, I, I am not bitching about anything or disagreeing with anything you guys are saying because the Cubs are a great run organization and the White Sox are not. End of story. Uh, the White Sox did. The Cubs concessions aren't great. Aren't no. as great, but the White Sox are better. That's, all, that's I'll give you that. Like, you have the concession. I now. still like the ping situation at Wrigley. I like of the Of course. Trust. Yeah, you like crossing streams. Well, no, everyone looks at me and is well, like, It's a lot Damn. better than it was before. You're <laughs> yes, not like staring it, at each other in the face. Person. Yeah, it is a lot better than it used to be, but yeah, it's still pretty bad. Uh, the Sox waved the white flag. Uh, they declined their option on Tim Anderson uh, ending his tenure with the White Sox. He was homegrown, came all the way up, had big moments. Uh, you know, the... Uh, Field Field of dreams dream. game and you know the the bat flipping and the you know you, you guys are choking kind of thing that all that stuff um he's falling from grace and i really think that he needs a new home to reset to do well where just um he needs to be in a winning, winning culture uh you can't you, you can't be in an organization that is lacking leaders and you claim to be a leader and don't lead he needs right? somebody to challenge him he does and yeah. hopefully he goes to Cleveland and uh, they knock some sense into him again. Um, uh, again. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You forgot that fun moment. You forgot. Oh to no, say man, that. I'm I'm done with TA. Like all that. You you want to talk all that shit and then you don't produce? I'm 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 sick of it, bro. I'm 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 up to here with the White Sox not producing, bro. I'm happy for you, Jose. You Thank know, you. It, it takes a big man to admit it. 100. percent TA was TA was a problem at a certain point, man. Yes. Like too much talk, not enough production. And you're being groomed to be the, the face of the White Sox. Yeah. Like you were given every opportunity. And, you know, he's at the castle. And, I, and he had, exactly. And he had personal issues. Yep. Right? Baby we'll, mama we'll, issues. We'll go, yeah, we will stay off of that. But he did it. On the field issues. <laughs> Lord, he did it. He did it. He, it's, it was him. But <laughs> the, on, the, the, on the field issues right. are bigger than that. 100%. You know what I'm so, yeah. And then, you know he, he he fucked around and he found out, like right. mm-hmm. like you want to start a fight you better finish it you know that's what my dad taught me was, like you if you if you start a fight and you're gonna get suspended bro you better win that was, right that was just, absolutely just, just yeah bro I'm like hey bro I'm, I'm, yeah. go, <laughs> go over to TKO or one of these boxing gyms around here and bro learn some boxing skills that because so awesome that was. oh my god yeah uh, uh, can you do me a favor and play the White Sox song for me mm. oh wow wow. White Sox, White Sox, no go, go, White Sox, let's go, 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 White Sox, we're the Oh my oh, god, I, I love it. I fucking hate you guys. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to be honest with you, I don't know what, you're, what the White Sox are going to be looking forward to next season. 
I honestly do not think. Here, here's the thing. What I okay? Let me, let me finish. I'm gonna answer your question. Hendricks is also uh, the decline the option on Hendricks. Liam Hendricks is done, and I think that's a bullshit move. Uh, the guy just went through cancer. He's such a good guy in the clubhouse. Maybe he he did want to be there. I don't know. Maybe he said I want to go to a winning team. But I he was such a class act with uh, supporting all the, the dog organization, the LGBTQ organization, donating to uh, Australia or New Zealand and all that shit. He was literally a great. Uh, he did the uh, Pauly D concert. Uh, benefiting his foundation, like the dude was a class act. Um, that, that, that didn't happen because the the jelly roll, the gun in the jelly roll. No, no, that was that, that was no, that was the nineties one. That wasn't nothing to do with Liam. Oh, that was no, no, <laughs> that was nineties night. Nineties night. Yeah. You know what I'm talking about, Stephen. You know what? I'm, you know. No, what I'm I do about. know what you're talking about. Yeah, that was Stephen yeah. with the gun in his, in, in his rolls. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, totally. I brought it in, and I was like, "I'm making sure that no one comes back here." He's like, "I do not like vanilla ice." Yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, thank you, Ivan. Uh, yes, Monty Grandal is out. Thank God. Thank God he's gone. Uh, so the kid will be catching, which I still think we need a veteran catcher. Uh, so yeah, T. A. Hendrix and Clevenger, who said he wanted to come back to the White Sox, he said he loved his time here, opted out of his contract and said, fuck you, I'm out. Um, so we have holes at right field, shortstop, second base. Everywhere. Catcher. You guys are Swiss cheese right now. Oh, oh yeah. we're wet paper, wait tissue paper. The <laughs> best thing yeah. you got going is the tailgating. The, yeah. the tailgating, our food, and our bobbleheads. We have a shitload of bobblehead oh, nights. Yeah. Oh. Oh, you uh, okay? I'll give you that. And the Cubs are getting Souvenirs. better. The Cubs yes, are getting better. better. The souvenir, the 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 aesthetics yes. of what your operation the promotions over there on on thirty fifth and Shields. Yeah, the aesthetics of your operation over there on the south side are really good. I like I like the promotions. I like the food. The tailgating's awesome. Yep. It's just the fucking rest of it sucks. <laughs> it's, it's exactly like the Chicago Fire. No <laughs> one wants to admit that. they're a Chicago Fire <laughs> fan, but they yeah. like tailgating for fucking three hours. <laughs> that's uh, that's as far as it goes. They're like, oh, there was a game? I didn't even notice. You know? Uh, yeah, it's just, that's as simple as it is. And right now, we're again, we're the, we're the, we're the butt of the joke. Uh, in Chicago, yeah. and it just it is what it is. I'm still gonna support my team, and I'm I'm gonna hear a lot of shit for the next couple of years. But I'm gonna watch a winning team with the Cubs. So that's all I'm gonna say. Uh, yeah. So to answer Stevens thing, yeah, the food is the best. Oh, the um, uh, with the Vertucci boys, you do buy the 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 patio package for forty five, six fifty bucks, whatever it is. It's gonna all be you, really cheap. All you uh, can eat. All you, all you can eat chicken, ribs, burgers, hot dogs. They have pasta. And and all the beer you can drink for ninety minutes, I think that's where at in the patio in right field yeah, underneath. You, you broke up. Uh, you broke up for a second. And yeah. it's in the patio underneath uh, right field. It's oh, it's it's, it's like fifty that. bucks. We yeah. went down there. Yeah, it's fifty bucks. All you can drink. They have barbecue chicken, hot chicken. They got ribs, hot dogs, hamburgers. They have pastas. They have, and then. Well, look, I'm down. We're going. We're definitely going to games this this summer. Oh, yeah. Uh, I'm just saying. I know for a fact I'm going to be at that very first, and I hope it's game one at Wrigley, uh, Brewers Cubs game. Oh, that for sure. I'm oh, 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 looking for fucking tickets. I'm gonna be the the day it's coming. I'm gonna be one of the first motherfuckers, like at six in the morning, waiting for it, even though it opens up at one. Or whatever the hell it is, like I want those tickets. No, and that would be a great thing. I think that's actually what's going to happen with the schedule. Uh, I think yeah. the schedule, the schedule should be uh, out. I don't think the times are out there, but I think the schedule should be fine, free, free out there. Oh, they could switch it. They could switch it. I want to <laughs> see that. If it's the first first series of the season. Uh, well, yes but, and no. It's fucking cold in Chicago in April. Come on. I want a yeah, nice warm wow. day that the Cubs can fucking just hit a shitload of homers on them. Well, I want to be in the know. bleachers for that one. I want. I want to get sunburned. I, I, I just. I want to see it because, like, you're gonna get. Look, look. You, Stephen, already sent that that clip, and I hope. I wish you. I wish I could upload. Actually, I probably. I, I am. I'm gonna go get that clip right now. But you saw that clip, Jose, of of the Brewers fan that was calling for war. Mm -hmm. And I and I feel I, I I agree with him. I could understand 
his pain. Do I give a fuck? No. <laughs> so, so for me, I'm just like, hold on. I'm, I'm, uh, 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 let me pause. Hold on. I, I'm, I, I got you it. Got you got it. You got it. it. Go ahead. I got it. Give me a second. I'm going to go bring it up because it's just hilarious <laughs> how fucking pissed <laughs> this guy is. And it just sit back and listen. Uh, it's it's one of the funniest fucking things I've seen today. I'm so glad you love this. The reaction great council goes to the Chicago Pete and I am absolutely bored. We have not seen anything as treacherous as this in Wisconsin. <laughs> not Brett Favre going to the Vikings. This is way fucking worse. Great Council has been a part of the Brewers since he was a child. And now he's going to be Cannot happen. I do not know what Mark Ananasio and Matt Fury did. How did you let this fucking happen? This is absolutely absurd. I love and it. The Cubs rivalry is now fucking on. I want to bury them every goddamn game that we play, and I want to win the division on their ass. But council, it's going to take some time to heal, buddy. At some point, we'll build you a statue. But from now on, it's fucking real. You're going to build the guy a statue. You're going to build the guy a statue after he wins the World Series with the Cubs. <laughs> Oh my god, I loved it. And I've, I've been finding those clips all on uh, Tickety Talk, you know. Oh my so god, I'm like, I gotta Delicious. send this one to group, and I'm like, I know Ivan's gonna enjoy that video. Holy Delicious. shit, all the tears, all the tears taste like spotted cow tonight. <laughs> <laughs> all taste like spotted cow. I love it. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> oh oh man, cow. that's, fucking that's awesome. great beer. I love spotted cow. I love spotted cow. Yeah, of course, cow. you do. Yeah, it's <laughs> delicious, man. Um, well, yeah, because you'll drink anything things besides I about, things I don't talk shit about Wisconsin. The cheese and the beer. The cheese, the brats, and the beer. Yeah. All right. I just, I'll say beer. Culver's is a good invention, too. Culver's as well. I I'm not, that was just over the border. Just barely over the border. I mean, that, I think that was a tax thing. Like, uh, Illinois has a lot high taxes. I'll do it over here. <laughs> but, yeah. I, yeah so, I, I understand that. Yeah. yeah but, uh, I mean, uh, that was great. That was great. That's like watching the Dallas Cowboys when they lose and they throw yeah, shit against and breaks it. Yeah. And well, it, it would have been Sunday too because they lost. Oh, um, tell me yep. Wario because I'm just trolling out here with a. Oh, hey, great. Come, I'm, I'm, I just want to get a <laughs> Wario mustache and troll these motherfuckers. I, oh. It's, to, me, to me, it's it's like I said before, and I'll say, I, I'll just reiterate it one more time. It's a breath of fresh air. To see the Cubs being aggressive again, and Jed has been criticized here and there. They, they've they've criticized ownership. I've criticized ownership. This is the start. They went ahead and they were uh, they got Theo last time. Theo was the main the main piece Cog, last yeah. time. Mm -hmm. This time they've had an established GM in Jed who's worked. With this ownership for a long time, he's a world. He's won a World Series with the Cubs. Right. You know, in the front office when they won, he's been a part of this. It's his team. It's time to be aggressive, and he was fucking aggressive with who he wants to operate it because the way the Cubs have been put together, it, it just seems to me like this year is the next step. Like you, you need you have the young talent behind you. You have all the money you could want in in front of you to go ahead and go after high price talent. Yeah. You have a top tier manager who's gotten the most out of less than anybody in the past decade. Yeah. With the Milwaukee Brewers. He inherited them when he started, he inherited them. I, I got the stats here. 2015 when he started, 61 wins. Mm -hmm. 61 wins in the NL Central, right? Yep. You go ahead, 73 wins his second year. Then he shoots up to 86, 96, 89. Then you have the, I'm going to ignore the, the, the 2020 year. Cause it's 29 and 30. Right. But uh, you know, it's that neither here nor there. It's kind of hard to judge that, 
But after that 89 and 19 in 2021, 95, 86, 92. So, like, for me, the Brewers never went after the guys to put them over the top. And they, they traded couldn't. their closer. They, they traded couldn't. the top-tier closer. They traded their closer. So, like, the Brewers were really – they were cashed after they got all their talent up. After they brought all their talent up, that was it. You're playing with these guys. We got nobody else. We can't really go out and spend. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So it's just it's just kind of how it is. Now, you got a guy that wants to fucking win another World Series, bro. He wants, you know, as a player on the Diamondbacks, and now, you know, as a manager, he wanted to win in Milwaukee. Nine years in Milwaukee. He gave you everything. Yeah. He gave you everything. It's That's all you could ask of uh, Craig Council. If you're not going to go get him the players – that he needs to go out and win the fucking World Series. He might as well leave to a team who has all that in place to do so. Right. You, you, deep pockets, great city. They'll love great you forever. Food. You'll be a legend. Close to his family. Yeah, it's close, close to his, to his family. family. Yeah. You'll be a legend. If you win here, you won't have to pay for another meal. No, you absolutely know? not. I'll right. pay for a hot dog. Yeah, we'll you all, love you. We'll love I can afford right now, but you know. enemy number one in in Wisconsin. Well, that like you, he right now, I, like that guy said was true. He is public enemy number one in Wisconsin sports. Craig Council, like it, it's and I'm all I'm here for, it, baby. You're on my team now, Craig. We, <laughs> I got you, babe. Like, don't worry about it. We're gonna do this together. Like, I'm gonna get you high, Craig. Craig. Yeah, right. We go, we go get high, Craig. We gonna do this, Craig. Yeah, we we've got to come up with some T-shirts for the Cubs. Uh, our, you know, like a wanted sign. Our uh, public enemy number one, Craig right. Council. That'd be awesome. Right. I'll design something. Yeah, let, let's let's make some designs. We need some T-shirts. Okay. Uh, let's put a poll and see. You know, no, just fucking make a bunch of T-shirts. If they buy them. They buy them. Let's do it. Okay. Well, you're funding it. Uh, you know, I'll just no, we don't have design. to fund it. It's it, it'll be it's they'll make them as you you order them. It's very simple. We we'll, we'll talk off air about. It. But we need to come up with some funny funny uh, Cubs T-shirts. Uh, you know, check the fufa for the White Sox. Wow. You know. Wow. Mm-hmm. Over here praising the Cubs, you just gotta throw me on some. Shade. I mean, I'm I'm all for it. I just I'm really happy today. Wow. You know. <laughs> <laughs> ain't, no, ain't nothing gonna spoil his sunshine today. All right, yeah. I'm not spoiling. I just said nothing bad about the Cubs. <laughs> not one I'm bad thing about the sunshine, Cubs, baby. Oh my god, I can't. Like honestly, it's it's not necessarily the White Sox fault. Like it's oh. not their fault that they say the Cubs are a better organization. Right they now. are. They are. You know, the Cubs are be- and for a long time. Have- for a mm-hmm. long time, it looked like the White Sox. We had that. We had the window. Yeah, but, and but you know what that was? That window was in a special ed, uh, in a special ed room that opens two inches. That that's that's what the window was. All right, it was that special window. All right, it, it is it's facts. I mean, the fact that they put uh, 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 what's his name, what Chris Getz. You put <laughs> yeah, you put yeah, yeah, you put uh, uh, <laughs> Getz in there when uh, Ming, Kim 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 Ning fucking mm-hmm. resigns, and you could have had her. Who fucking fleeced the White Sox for some players? I mean, and she had a winning team that went to the playoffs. I mean, it's just Tim Anderson's gonna go to the Marlins. I bet. No, 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 that, no, no. The Marlins don't need him. Let's oh, okay. Let's go back to Tim Anderson for a second. That's actually yeah. like, like the Bulls are winning. What the fuck? I know. I have the game on right here, and uh, Paige is over here, exciting too. She's excited. I don't think I don't think Tim Anderson deserves, and not that he doesn't deserve it, but I don't think that a, a winning team is going to take a chance that he goes in and breaks up a locker room, winning or not, winning or not. You, you know what I'm saying? Like, and I know it cures a lot, but I just don't think he, you're going to take a risk with that. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, like I mentioned before, he was given every opportunity to be the face of a fucking franchise. Yeah, and in 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 a big market town. Yeah, mm-hmm. like that. You gotta, you gotta throw caution to it. You know, it's you gotta be cautious. He's gonna go to a small market like, team. He has to go to a small I market imagine, team. I imagine so. He's gotta go, go to, to Milwaukee. Brewers. Yeah, exactly. He's gonna go to Milwaukee. He's gonna go to maybe, maybe Tampa can take a flyer on him. 
just to fill up, fulfill a need. Uh, or somewhere where he's oblivious if you win or not. They don't give a shit. You know, somewhere that, that baseball's not the main the main sport. Anaheim or LA. Oh, perfect. Yeah, Anaheim's Anaheim. perfect. That's where White Sox players go to die. Um yeah, that that's that's it, you know. Um you guys want to take a quick break and then we'll wrap up with the Bulls and the Blackhawks. We have to yeah, let's do it. Yeah, let's do that. Let's do that. All right. Well, we'll be right back after a word from our sponsors. I think I'll perplex him with my slow ball. One, two, three, strike, you're out. Hey, true Chicago sports fans, show off your Chicago pride with some fresh clothes from Grit Clothing Company. Grit Clothing Company. At Grit Clothing, they create that simple yet classic style that represents that Chicago Southside lifestyle. From t-shirts to hoodies, hats to glassware, they've got you covered. Grit has everything you need to represent your Chicago pride. So do it right now. Check out GritClothingCo.com and use the promo code TrueFan15. TrueFan15. For 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, percent off your entire order. Let me say it again. That's gritclothingco.com and use the promo code TRUEFAN15 for 15% off of your entire order. What up? It's Martin Moreno and you are listening to True Chicago Sports Fans Podcast. Thank you, Martin. 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 Yeah, I love Martin. Martin was hilarious on the show. If you haven't uh, seen that episode or listened to that episode, please go back in the archives and listen to that one. It's about 90 minutes of Martin making us laugh nonstop. Uh, I know you pissed your pants for sure that day. (laughs) Yeah. Because you called me and you said that I need to change a pants swing by the apartment. Yeah. And and my mom get, will give you some pants and no. some chonies. Yeah, and then she didn't answer, and you brought your own. So I had to, you know, squeeze into those little ones, little tight whities. <laughs> hey, uh, <laughs> it still hangs out of them, my friend. Well, it sure was hanging out that day. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> all right, let, let's talk about these uh, bulls, and I'm going to play this song for like five seconds. One, two, three, four, Hello, five. Right, you're that's enough. starting lineup. The, no. the bummy bulls. Uh, the Chicago bullshit Bulls. Bulls, for example, like right now, it's total bullshit. Like I've been betting on them the last couple of days. I've been losing my money. I've been yeah, one leg, one leg. I keep losing. <laughs> I've uh, been losing my money because I had uh, Vooch the other day with Brooklyn going under under seventeen points. Got that. Demar going over twenty two. He got twenty four. Mm-hmm. Okay. Now all I needed was for the Bulls to win and a ten dollar bet to get a hundred and twenty dollars. And they screwed me. Yeah. Well, Levine has 22. DeRozan Only has the 20. Pool, baby. White. The pool. They're, they're, they're playing uh, actually great basketball right now. And they're playing against a pretty decent team. If they're up 103 they had to 80. turnovers tonight. The Utah Jazz. Well, because they're playing good because they got their ass whooped on Friday. Oh, yeah. I mean, look, 22, 20. And then Caruso's up there as well. I mean... You're winning 103 to 80. You should be doing this every sorry. night. Uh, Vucevic, I'm sorry. This guy is like, he gets 20 points or he'll have a great night. And after that, he can't get rebounds. No, I, I well, he's playing against a big. He's really not a big. He's a power forward. It's right. as simple as that. He plays like a power forward. He does not play like a center. When he and plays anybody, when he plays Thomas. against Embiid or, or Durant or any one of those bigs that are fucking really good, he shuts down. He disappears. That is expected of him. But when it's just a regular team with no big, he's going to dominate. And the thing is that they don't feed him the ball late in the game. And that's an issue because it spaces out the floor. If you feed your big man, everyone else is going to be open because they're going to come down and double team him. Boom, pop it out. I know we're not a three-point uh, shooting team. That's another issue they, they never addressed over the offseason. They got these uh, uh, these v- two veterans, but they are not the answer. No, they they play not. pretty good. They're, they do what their role is. They come in, right. they provide a spark, they they you know they spell everybody, but Kobe White needs to be better. Zach Levine Patrick needs- Williams does not deserve the contract that he's asking for. I think that guy is smoking some more stuff that uh, you know, I, I honestly I, he does not deserve it. He averages maybe four or maybe I want to be He had okay, zero points, points last game. He has yes. zero, he has zero yeah. points. How the fuck do you have zero points being fucking six eight? 
Yeah, and then he wants this like what fifty five million dollar contract year? Oh, get, yeah. Like, uh, it's ridiculous. No, dude, like you don't deserve it, and I would rather have him walk. He's gonna end up at Best Buy selling fucking car stereos. That's what he's gonna fucking do. See, 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 like there's a bunch of these players like a Pat Williams that have come into the league, awful potential, have shown maybe a, a few flashes, but they're going to throw $100 million at because of potential. Potential gets you fucking fired. You know, like mm-hmm. potential could get you fired if you don't develop said potential. And right now, the Bulls and the way they've developed Patrick Williams or the lack thereof, it's glaring. It's glaring. You know, you cannot get around that. And on top of that, you have you do have issues with both of your your scorers in DeRozan and Levine. So for me, the, the Bulls they need to really look at the trade deadline as an opportunity and a, an opportunity and an opt out because you could go ahead and recoup some type of assets at the trade deadline for a guy like Zach Levine, for a guy like DeMar DeRozan. Mm-hmm. You could you could. I don't know how what you're going to get for a guy like Pat P. Will, but like you could move Vooch for sure, and you could go ahead and try to restart something here because right now it just seems like the Bulls are in a basketball purgatory where they have not no future. Their past is distant, and we're just spinning our wheels in the dark, trying hoping that we could find our way. And right. it, it's sad. It's been said that this team. Levine- is- this team is the worst run team. And I know the White Sox are bad, but they're still worse than the White Sox at being in a, a, a run organization. Well, like, father like son, you know, I want to keep saying that we could put that in a t-shirt and have both the White Sox and the Bulls on there. Um, but, you know, you have Zach Levine. And was it seven years? He's been here since 2015 or maybe even. Yeah. Uh, or no, uh, eight years. But it's just like he's not. He's not the guy. I mean, I lo- I like him. He's great when he's on. But then there's a game that I saw the other day was holding the ball. Would just go up the court, get the ball, run it, and shoot it. And he wasn't even dishing it out because no one else was able to shoot the ball that night. That that is an that's that he's an ISO player. He's very James Harden ish, where he's gonna dribble ball to the last second and then shoot or create a turnover. That Zach is show. yeah, it's the Zach show, and that, and that's the thing. He's selfish. He wants his. Where Demar, he's like, all right, cool. If I'm hot, I'm gonna keep going. If not, I'm gonna be start dishing it off. And that's where Vooch doesn't get the ball in the third exactly. or fourth quarter. And then the egos get involved. And I know they had a team meeting the first after the first game, and they lost. And they've been two and five since. Right. So uh, I know one of them is oh, the big three. Apparently, one of them is gonna be gone by trade deadline. I guarantee I, I, it. I think I lost, I lost. I lost my faith in Zach Levine being a leader because I thought he was. I thought he was going. When he first got here, I thought he was trending that way. And now it's just like, man, I I don't have faith in any of them. You know, I don't have faith in any of the big, quote unquote, big three that we have. It, it's like I said, the, the future looks bleak for the Chicago Bulls. The future looks very, very gray. And I don't like that. I don't know where we're drifting off to. It, it's just not good. It, it really isn't. And I really think that. Miami might be a player for Zach in the trade deadline. I think DeMar can go to a contender, whether, you know, I know the Clippers have made some moves, right? Uh, you know, getting James Harden. They have, you know, Russ, and they have Kawhi, and they have... Um, Paul George. Paul George. Like, Jesus Christ, that's an all-star team from 2012. Um, but, like, the Lakers would be happy to get a DeMar. Or they like something a finishing piece for a, a championship team like that, and I really think Demar is going to be one of the players that gets moved. I think Vooch can also go to a contender uh, and, and and help them out. And you, you literally got to if you can trade all three, trade all three. Yeah. Well, and then, I know I'm going on Sunday, so just you know it won't. Just don't do anything like that until after. I have a reason to go. Monday, do it Monday. Yeah, do it Monday. Why? Uh, you don't want to see Javon Carter and Patrick Williams and uh, Caruso 
And uh, <laughs> I mean, I want to see a decent team. Um, but do you, no, do you not, who, do you're not watching the Bulls. I'll tell you that much. You're watching well, the team that I comes in. Something, I want to yeah. see a decent team too, Stephen. I haven't <laughs> seen that yet with you any know, of these players. I, I remember. I remember the trade deadline, like before when we got John Salmons, and we're like, uh, before we got into the uh, eight seed. John Salmons year. would have stud when he was with us. Yeah, I know. When we got him from Milwaukee, he came. Uh, and you know we got a couple of pieces and we made the eighth seed and then we went to the playoffs and it was great. Yeah. But um, I would like for that experience, you know, get a couple, you know, trades, get some players, and then go from there. It's, it's, uh, like just not just sell, sell. Like you know, equalize it. Get, you know, give me something. Give me like a couple new toys. Here's the problem with the Bulls. It's a cash cow. They lead the league in attendance for the longest time. Even when they were bad, they led the league in attendance. They're they're, that's what that is. It's like the Cubs, right? No matter what the product you put on there, it's a destination to go to. It's a historical place. For the Bulls, it's the same thing. Now, the experience going to there is better than the White Sox Stadium. But if you go to a Bulls game, there's music uh, just about in every entry. There's like, you know, there's there's a DJ. There's there's clowns. There's, you know, the blow up. Balloon the balloon guy, we, yeah. We, there's we face you painting. You can make signs. The, the the Bulls experience when you walk in through the door is second to none. They're shooting t-shirts at you. Yeah, yeah. So I've never gotten one my whole time. life. All the time they're doing it. Yeah, I never got one either. But they're doing it a lot more than you know. I've seen it done. Like they're they accommodate well. They yeah, they they give you a, a great fan experience. Like I've been on the court on one of those games. This is this is it's it's the owners. It like is. It's the White Sox thing. Promotions are great. It's Reinsdorf. It's so- Reinsdorf, bro. It's either the son, the father, or the son. Something needs to ch- look. Uh, the promotions and everything are nice, but when it comes to winning ball games, whether it be for the White Sox, who I really don't like, and, <laughs> and the Chicago Bulls, you don't put anything forward towards winning. The games you put everything to the accommodations, and the fans want wins. Yeah, like t-shirts are nice, but the fans, <laughs> the real fans, want fucking wins. Yeah, I don't want to see a clown when I'm walking in. I want to be like, yeah, fuck the Pistons. I want to see, I want to see guys with face paint ready to go out there. And I'll do be, it for you, Ivan. Parking. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I, you, you gotta start thinking a little more hungry. Right, you no, gotta right. start thinking a little more doggish, right? You gotta get a little nasty when it comes to the. And I think not necessarily taking away those things because they're nice accommodations. Thanks, you Lisa. You gotta have a mentality. Thanks for the support. Change. You gotta have a mentality change throughout your entire organization. I, I got I got a little backup support here. Look at this. Yeah, what, Lisa's whatever. very nice. Yeah, thanks, Lisa. You know, she she's, she's, she's gonna not, say go socks, but she's uh, not nice. she's you not know. Nice. She's not nice. She's not, she's just, she's <laughs> Thanks, not. Lisa. I got to give her a shout out, of course. Yeah. <laughs> she would talk shit, but yeah. Anyway. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> wow. Anyways. So how do we how do we fix the Bulls? Do, do they have to break the bank? Because they're not. They were banking on getting Giannis in in, in his uh, off season, oh, right? For sure. By getting and his not, brother. No. Yeah. God. The most horrible basketball player in the world is are his brothers. But now you can, now that that is not a target. You cannot get Giannis because he resigned. Uh, or quote unquote resign because I don't think he's he's put the pen on paper yet, um, but he's got a good team. What are we going to do? Like who are we going after? Because there's really no one that we're going to be able to sign. We would have to do a, a, a trade where we trade our three players for someone that's really good. Well, Ivan's I- always been jealous. He knows the Cubs suck. Wow, Lisa's got some fighting words, bro. Yeah, well, I mean, anyway. Uh, I don't know, Lisa. I'm sorry. I'm I'm a big Cubs fan here, so God, I can't. I can't. I Look at that! It came back me. up. <laughs> you know, I mean, I, again, I, I, Lisa, if you you know just joined in, we're um, the only reason why we go to White Sox Park is just to uh, drink and eat. And you know, if you want to watch baseball, you got to go to the North the Side. The Sox have become the Cubs. The what? The Sox have become the Cubs, the biggest bar in America. Yeah. Yeah. If you include the tailgate, yeah. You're not watching baseball. No. 
<laughs> you're, yeah, you're not. No. I would say the Cubs. You got the Blackhawks. Uh, maybe put the Bulls there. Then the Bears. And then the White Sox got to be dead last in like organizations in the city. Just throwing it out there. I am not. Nah, nothing to say about that. Nothing to say about that. Yeah. yeah. So, again, I think the Bulls trade all three and start from scratch and probably you know what maybe uh uh do what uh oklahoma city did is just keep fucking losing and keep stacking up fucking draft picks just stock them up because look at look at their team they got a pretty good core of young players that can ball out yeah i mean they beat us yeah they're good they're yeah. actually really good yeah so uh let's move over to the blackhawks these boys yeah. Yeah, these boys can play i got my blackhawks hat on my favorite blackhawk hat um these boys can play man they, they've they been pretty good they uh they upset the the, the, the knights the other night and yeah four uh, to two yeah and then yes was, they lost last night four to two they lost four to two i did oh, a little net um i did like uh place a bet i was like you know what it's zero zero i think though the under will work Six and a half. I went under, and the uh, total was six six goals. So nice. Uh, yeah, you know, double my money real quick. Even the other the other night, I think it was Friday when they uh, scored three goals in the first period, and yeah. I was like, "Wow, yeah, this is awesome." It was so much fun. I, and again, they're another up and coming team, and I think they're about three years away from actually competing for a cup. Um, it's very hard in the NHL because they have a hard salary cap. You know, their salary cap is probably like 70 million per team or something, whatever it is. Right. And you can't go over and it's super hard. And these guys don't even get paid that much. Um, but you, you will see what happened the other day with, uh, the Pittsburgh Penguins player. Um, the one I got. Yeah. 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 Very sad. Very tragic. Um, I saw the clip. I heard about it, but then I saw the clip and it, it was uh, intense. And I just got to say the guy who did it didn't do it intentionally. And he's, no. been, heavy, he's been getting a lot of uh, scrutiny for that. And it's not his fault. Y- you know what? It, it's a very dangerous game. It is yep. football on ice. Um, and the hardest thing to do is protect the players. You know, back in the day, they had like a plastic mask for the goalies. You know, it looked like Jason. And they're right. like, oh, yeah, it's just go out there and take 100-mile-an-hour pucks at your face. Like, right. that is not safe. So now they're wearing, you know, catcher-style masks that have um, uh, springs, and, and they can take impact and l- lessen the impact for less concussions and uh, not allowing you to get hurt. Now, even the goalies have the little uh, turkey and, thing that yeah. hangs down mm-hmm. to cover their throat because that can kill somebody. Why are, not, why are the regular hockey players not walking around or playing with a with neck that. guard? You know, so, so there's this one thing that I saw that it's um, Paige had shown it to me that it's this uh, kind of like this mesh kind of fabric that has like a little thick spot like right in front. So if a blade does go, it will not cut you. It's right. like a cushion thing there. Yeah. Um, and then they were talking about having the plastic blades. But okay, that's, that's floor hockey. Like, that's like floor really, hockey now. Right. Yeah. So I would put the guard on for the throat thing or put that mesh on them. I think that would be the base, like best part of it. I, you know, I think so. I think it can be done. I think uh, they already wear like Under Armour under their 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 sweaters and, and pads and all that stuff. Why not just make the Under Armour to come up to the neck and just change the material to something that can uh, deter that. from getting cut right. in the neck, you know? Um, and then just make the rest of the material around around the neck and the back be uh something breathable obviously because these guys are sweating their their balls off running uh skating back and forth so it, it can be done it just takes engineering and it takes uh, somebody to to put it together and so it's in the nhl and let's be do tested. it let's create something like that and so it's in the nhl it's you know okay. why not you know we're, not? we're three smart guys some more than others but you know <laughs> <laughs> uh who are they playing next uh steven uh let's see that is a very good question so today is actually the day that we're recording so they're off um and they're off today which they also the bulls and the blackhawks played on friday as well um so i had the both tvs going on uh let's see here so they don't play until until, thursday yeah pretty much till thursday 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 so they got like three day rest yeah 
and then no NBA teams are playing tomorrow, the day that you guys are listening to on the podcast, uh, because it is um, voting day. So it's election day. So uh, no NBA teams are playing because they're doing that initiative for that. So uh, Blackhawks will play the Lightning, which is also an exciting game. It's at 6 p.m. November 9th. Um, definitely tune in for that. Uh, all right. I mean, th- right now you can honestly say the Blackhawks have a better record than the Bears. So that being four and seven. So, <laughs> yeah. You know, wow. If we're wow. going to go there. I'm just saying. Uh, if you're tired of watching football, well, I'm not tired of watching football, but if you're tired of watching the Chicago Bears, you know, put out some hockey, you know? So. Yeah, definitely support that team. Definitely, definitely. I mean, because the Bears play Thursday night and the Blackhawks play Thursday night as well. If you're getting peeved and, you know, pissed, just put on some hockey. Yeah, yeah. Like- uh, but hey, as they say in hockey, let's do that hockey. Thank you, Chance. <laughs> Yeah, let's do that. Hacking. All right, all right, all right. So, uh, how about we close this out with what you watching that isn't sports? Um, pretty much. Uh, oh man, I've been rewatching what is it? Uh, Mad Men today. I still have not seen that show. So, rewatching Mad Men that came on today uh, was a great suggestion. Um, when I came out from my long sl- uh, slumber, <laughs> so. Uh, which was cool. And then um, what else was I get watching last night? Ooh. No, that was pretty much it. So I don't know. That's Ivan, it? Do you recommend then, Mad Men? Yeah, I, I loved it. I own actually all the seasons. Nice. Ivan, what you been watching? Uh, just that new Frasier. Oh, yeah. How's that? Is it getting better? It's all right. It's all right. It's getting better. It's, it's starting to like... Obviously, it's a new show. Like I said, new show, new characters, and everything like that. So they're trying to establish... You know, all the characters. I just feel like it's starting to open up. It, it's going to begin to start opening up a little more with, um, like, character development. Like, you're going to start seeing less of everybody and more of, like, Frasier along with this person's story or whatever like that. So I, I just think it's starting to get better and better each episode. That's awesome. That's awesome. Look, what, what, what Stephen, what are you eating? Ramen. <laughs> Wow. Wow. Are you doing that to Ivan? No, I was doing it to you. I was waiting for you to see. Why? No, that was Uh, funny. (laughs) (laughs) So. Uh, All right. I've been watching Loki. Uh, That's a phenomenal. Wow. I'm just kidding. Love it. It is is great because it's going to reset the Marvel Universe. And the Marvel Marvel Universe is in shambles. The Marvel Universe? Yeah, it's in yeah. shambles. Uh, if you go to No One on the Weekend, you'll hear from me, Sean, and my actual college friend, Andre, uh, who's just as big of a Marvel person as I am. So you will talk about that. Miss Marvel uh, comes out November 11th, this Friday. Yeah. So um, there's no promotion going on because of the writer's strike. So you're just going to see trailers. Um, if you want to go see it, go see it. I, I mean, I'm going to go see it. So, of course you are. Of course you are. I mean, I'm a guy who wants to see badass women. So, okay. you know. Okay. If you say so. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, go watch Low Key. It's a great series. Uh, well written, well thought out. Uh, and then you'll see what is, you know, what's going to happen in the next Marvel series and the next phase because uh, – Loki is a major cog in this, and I can't wait for the season finale, which is uh, next week or this week, this Thursday. So, um, oh. Ivan, I just want to wish you a happy Veterans Day, sir. Thank you for your service. Yes, thank happy you, Veterans Day. Thank you to all the veterans that are, that are listeners and everybody who is a veteran. Uh, thank you for your service um, that is uh, being observed this Friday. Um, so, you know, we can't be a great country without our veterans. So. I want to give you guys a shout. Ah, that makes sense now because he wanted to buy the ve- uh, the veteran uh, hat from the Bears, but he didn't want to buy it because, ah, that makes sense now. Okay, I didn't know that. Welcome to the show, Steven. Well, no, he never <laughs> told me that, you know? So, oh, I'm, yeah, you did. He I, mentioned I it. Ask everyone? Uh, I, I, I was present, but I don't, it didn't click for me. So, <laughs> yeah. Oh, I don't even know who this is calling me. Anyways, um, <laughs> yeah, it's spam. It is spam. It is definitely spam. Jesus. All right. I think it's time to get out of here, fellas. 
All right, y'all, that is it for today. Thank you for listening. A big thank you to our sponsor, 606 Media, True Chicago Sports Fans, and Great Clothing Company. Don't forget to go to greatclothingco.com and get your official TCSF podcast t-shirt. Search for keyword True Chicago. Use our promo code TRUEFAN15 at the checkout for 15% off your entire order. That is TRUEFAN15. Go and get your shirts now. A big huge uh, shout-out to Ivan. Uh, happy Veterans Day. Steven, happy belated birthday again. And thank you. thank you. Yeah, thank you to J.C. Howard for joining us. Uh, I know he had technical dish. Uh, uh, technical issues with his audio and the internet so uh he'll be back on next week hopefully uh the newest show on the 606 family is in the water and weekend podcast with steven and sean a pop culture forward podcast that dabbles in funny trivial film television music and chicago centric news and happenings new episodes uh Monday-ish, Tuesday, Tuesday-ish. I would say, uh, as safe said, it's Tuesday. Just do, yeah. right after you listen to this show, let, go, go ahead and switch over and listen to Real Water in the Weekend. Uh, if you want to check uh, me out on Sunday, I'll be at the UC. You know, if you want to DM me, buy me a beer, that'd be pretty cool. Take a couple photos. Uh, if you want me to do a cameo, um, it's pretty much free. <laughs> stuff like that. Uh, you know, or if you want to, like, just pay me in beers, that'd be cool, too. Um, or a go. steak sandwich that's on the third floor. So, yeah, wherever you're at, uh, come say hi. Yeah. Uh, Jose will not be with me, so no, no I'm not <laughs> invited to this game. reason why you want to say hi. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no. I, I even uh, uh, let's plug your shows. Yeah, tomorrow, uh, tomorrow night, seven thirty, another bear show. Gonna be talking about well, another loss <laughs> by the Chicago <laughs> Bears. Um, definitely gonna be you know a. a Packed show, like I'm gonna address everything. Um, I still think that Justin Fields deserves the benefit of the doubt in getting the rest of the games if he's healthy. But if the performance in those games aren't good, well, we're just gonna have to move on, and that's just the nature of the beast. That's the NFL. So check me out tomorrow night, 7:30 Central Time, 8:30 Eastern. Another bear show on the Tape Never Lies Network, YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, all that, all that, all that. Beautiful. Shout out to Ronash Panic Series Beats and Custom Made for the beats we played on today's show. Check out PanicOnTheBeat.com for your moment merch and gear. Check us out on social media. You can find us at uh, TCSF Pod on the X, and uh, you can find us on Facebook, IG, and Spotify. Just Type in True Chicago Sports and you'll find us. You reach us out at our email at True Chicago Sports Fans at gmail.com. All right, y'all. For Ivan and Stevie B, I am Big Z. We'll see you next time for episode 169. And until then, be good to each other for the love of sports. A few moments later. Wait, the Bears are what we thought they were. What, what, what we thought they were. Um, you know, this is not how we wanted it to go. You almost can't even make it up. It's that bad. <laughs> best friends yep you have a lot of incest that's real shut your mouth lover boy nature versus nurture lodge nature always wins i think he's on steroids hasta luego amigos that's all oh i shouldn't have had those artichokes poppers thanks cubs